Good morning and welcome to this uh, webinar. Welcome to the Embassy of Spain. We are broadcasting live, as it were. We've set up a small TV studio here at the Chancery uh, of the Embassy of Spain in the heart of the European uh, Quarter. Uh, welcome to this uh, public diplomacy uh, program, uh, Los Mediodías de la Embajada, and particularly Spain Means Innovation, which is an initiative of the Spanish Chamber of Commerce here in Luxembourg and Belgium. And today we are devoting this special edition uh, to COVID-19. Without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, the ambassador of Spain to the Kingdom of Belgium, who will do the official opening of this webinar, Beatriz La Rocha Palma, embajadora, por favor. Bonjour, buenos dias, good morning. It is a privilege to welcome you to the lab this fantastic space of the Spanish Embassy, which we dedicate to cultural and scientific activities and exchanges between Belgium and Spain. In addition, this webinar is a practical exercise of the science, technology and innovation diplomacy efforts of Spain, Belgium and Luxembourg. Mankind is engaged like never before in the fight against the current pandemic. There is a fundamental driving force behind these efforts, including the huge scientific working, the entrepreneurial spirit and the innovative technological solution on which we will present a few examples today. I'm eager to listen to you. Muchas gracias. Un grand merci. Thank you, Bell, and thank you so much for tuning in and enjoy this webinar. I have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Katri Bodewin, who is the Head of Service of Healthcare Associated Infections uh, and Antimicrobial Resistance from Cienzano. Professor. Thank you very much. I will share my screen and uh, thank you for this kind uh, introduction, buenos dias. I will share my screen and give you an overview of how in Belgium our institute works with the COVID pandemic. So um, we are an institute that combines both human, veterinary and environmental research for public health. And whereas in former days, our mission was to have a long, healthy life, now we intend to have an overall healthy, long life. So we have more ambition. We do a lot of activities. One of the main goals in Belgium in the current COVID crisis is to monitor the mortality. We have a lot of data. I will show some of these right in a minute. And we have projects that would like to combine because in all countries there is different authorities that have responsibilities for prevention, for finance, for, prevent, uh, for curative medicine and so on. We would like to have databases that are linked. And two of these projects are LinkFAC, in particular for the vaccine efficacy and Helicon in which we want to measure the long-term effects, both on a physical, long hauling, for instance, and mental health aspect. So this is to just show you that the direct effects on your left, uh, the mortality, morbidity, are monitored in real time for the moment. And in uh, particular, the mortality, uh, we follow up, and you see here, we have until yesterday, numbers on the casualties and just to highlight the difference we see um, we see that this is a situation in Belgium. We have I have the honor to introduce actually a fellow Barcelonia but I think she's in Brussels presently Marina Martinez who is uh, the the program on Horizon 2020 and now the uh, Europe no, uh, Horizon program officer I'm going to focus in Horizon Europe course, which are going to open in the next weeks, so mid uh, May. And uh, the one which is much more related with the question that we are talking today is the one related with advanced materials for the health sector. 
we are talking about collaborative projects. So you have to present uh, your ideas in a consortium, in a consortium that can be uh, made by uh, public, uh, private organizations, uh, you can uh, find associations of consumers, um, public administration as well, research centers, technological centers, companies, big, small ones. Uh, so everybody which is a legal entity is invited to to present proposals under the format of a consortium. And I would like to end my, my slides with showing some results, some excellent results of the Spanish participant in the last framework program Horizon 2020, where Spain is the first country in return with the 21.9% of the EU 27, I 28, in advanced materials and nanotechnologies for healthcare. We're traveling now to Luxembourg. We have the honor as well to connect to the, with the ambassador of Spain uh, in Luxembourg, uh, to Bernardo uh, de Sicart y Escoda. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, let me express my deep gratitude to Dr. Shockwell for taking part actively in this webinar about COVID-19 response. Dr. Shockmel is an eminence in this field. He is a very well-known doctor and researcher in Luxembourg and a recognized researcher everywhere. Many thanks as well to the Spanish Chamber of Commerce in Belgium and Luxembourg, and to the Spanish Cultural Center in Luxembourg, Antonio Machado. Both of them have helped us to outreach this webinar. I hope you will enjoy the webinar. Thank you to you all. Gracias. A Dr. Gerard Chocmel, who is uh, a medical consultant now at the Hôpital uh, Robert Schumann in, in Luxembourg. Dr. Chocmel, many questions to ask you, but I would like to start with a very basic one. Uh, is tell us, a bit about your work today, presently, as a, as a medical consultant in such a major hospital. What does it entail as it pertains to the, to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? The Robert Schumann hospitals are the biggest hospital group in Luxembourg, and we are four uh, hospital establishments, and we have dedicated one of those establishments um, to COVID. So the COVID patients go to one of the, actually to the largest of our hospitals, which is uh, on the, the Kirchberg Plateau. That's also where you would find uh, the European institutions. I think when we come to prevention, talking about nursing homes and about hospitals, vaccines, as you know, are the solution, but um, there are, is still a lot of vaccine hesitancy in the population and even among healthcare professionals. If you can uh, give us an idea of, of testing and where we are now today with testing. I think uh, that fortunately we are evolving to a large use of rapid tests. And uh, uh, up to now, uh, at least in our country and in most countries, the gold standard for testing were the PCR tests. I mean, with the PCR test, you would detect viral RNA. That being the gold standard, PCR still has one major problem. So, uh, the other thing is that these tests are becoming widely available, that they, will, they are at relatively low cost, and that they give you a result very quickly. I mean, after 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So I think that rapid tests might be leading the way and also might allow us um, to progressively loosen restrictions. Because even if we have rapid tests, we won't uh, immediately stop the wearing face masks or practice social distancing. So basically these are added on top of each other. So we have asked uh, Adolfo Fernandez, who is the director of this uh, research center and Belen, Caval, who is the, uh, the, the lead investigator, to, to tell us a bit about some of these uh, applications, how nanotechnology has been useful 
uh, in, in fighting this pandemic. Uh, Adolfo, again, thank you so much for being here. And Belen, please tell us a bit about, about the center, about the work that you do, so we can understand better this challenge that you've had to face as scientists. Thank you so much for being with us. Only a small uh, detail that we are placed in Spain, but in the north of Spain, in Asturias, uh, not in Madrid, but this is, this is not important. We are a, a research center, uh, CINN, the Nanomaterials and Nanotechnology Research Center, is a, a mixed institute participated by CSIC, uh, the University of Oviedo and, and Principality of Asturias. And we are specialized in the synthesis, preparation, and characterization of multifunctional materials, especially ceramic materials, for different application fields, uh, such as uh, health, components for big science, uh, industry, or uh, information and communication and technologies. Uh, we are working on different solutions, uh, for example, in the field of epigenetics, on the effects of nanoparticles, of course, in, in, on health. The objective of this project is to develop antimicrobial surfaces capable of eliminating or reducing the viral load on them. Cleaning is an essential uh, first step in any disinfection process, helps to remove pathogens or significant, significantly reduce their load on contaminated surfaces. But unfortunately, these measures are not durable the surfaces can be contaminated again over time, and then cleaning and disinfection processes will have to be repeated. Uh, now we are still working on this. Uh, we observe activity, but further investigation is necessary in order to obtain a, be a better performance of, of these materials. But Dr. Lagaron is group leader and founder of the, of the group Novel Materials and Nanotechnology at the Institute of Agrochemistry and Food Technology and how we became flexible to help, right? Which I think is one of the primary objectives of, of uh, public researchers. We gather knowledge, but eventually over time, our responsibility is to cast this knowledge into those needed areas uh, where, where we can really help the population who is in the first place uh, paying our, our salaries, right? Yeah, so what we did is we were working for a very long time in developing nanofiber based technologies for different applications. So the company had to, so we had to develop the filter media. Eventually we, uh, we did that, we patented within one month and a half after the pandemic started. Uh, what is new about this? So what, what is new is that we're using extremely thin fibers, thousand times smaller than the cross section of a human hair. So they're really tiny. They are very long. They are extremely long fibers, but they are very thin. So there is uh, ultra thin uh, masks that, uh, that are extremely efficient in protection against the virus. And then they offer comfort. Uh, the medical profession to researchers. And now we're going to the, to the pharmaceutical industry because uh, David Gehring uh, is here representing Pharma, a BE, Pharma Belgium, an association, a platform of, uh, of uh, over 130 uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies based in, 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 uh, in Belgium. He's had an experience in, in, in other companies, in TUI, in, in the European Commission. So um, Pharma de B is the, um, the association of over 130 pharmaceutical uh, companies in Belgium, the Pharma Valley, um, that is how we like to call Belgium, is uh, a very important player in Europe, always in the top three. There is over one patent application per day uh, coming from Belgium. And um, it's not only about research and development, it's also about export and import. 12.5% of the total Belgian exports relate to medicines and uh, vaccines. And obviously, that also has a huge impact on uh, the financial side of things. Uh, that means that Belgium has a really good position in uh, that field. But so basically, Pharma.be wants to build bridges with all stakeholders in the healthcare system. Again, thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Merci beaucoup. Thank you well. And tot ziens. And we'll see you again soon. Please stay tuned. Thank you all. Goodbye. Goodbye.